In this video, I will show you how to install the Ranarak Backbone on the Jeep Drangler JL four-door. Ensure you lay out all your components on the shadow board prior to installation. To complete this fitment, you will need the following protective equipment and tools. Gloves, respirator, safety glasses, caulking gun and butyl mastic, masking tape, drill bits, factory Jeep tool with T50 Torx bit, cordless drill, Make space and provide yourself with easy access to the interior of your car. This vehicle in particular has come with factory insulation panels. Start by removing the panels. We will reinstall these later. Using the factory Jeep ratchet tool, remove the M8 bolts that secure the hardtop. Install the rear upright frame and position over the factory nuts. Loosely secure with the factory bolts. Install the front upright frame in the same fashion. The front frame should interlock neatly with the rear frame. Secure all three bolts with the factory Jeep tool. It is important that the hardtop makes contact with the sheet metal body. Before proceeding with any drilling, make sure you are wearing your protective equipment. Insert an 8.5 millimeter or 5 16 inch drill bit into the drill chuck. Make sure the drill is square to the mounting face. Apply pressure to the rear upright and drill through the two uppermost holes. Vacuum swarf and fiberglass. Apply a liberal amount of butyl mastic around the newly drilled holes. Grab the rear castings that correspond with the side you are fitting. Using the M6 shoulder bolts, pass them through the outer hole of the casting. Place the casting bolts through the drilled holes. It is not yet necessary for the bolts to go through the frame. Loosen the hardtop hardware to allow access to the bolt threads. Install the M6 flat washers between the hardtop and the frame on both bolts. By pushing the frame against the hardtop, Pass the thread through the holes. Install the M6 flat washer and nylock nut to the bolt. Tighten with a combination of Jeep ratchet tool and Rhino Rack multi-tool. Grab the middle casting that corresponds with the side you are fitting. Place the middle casting onto the exterior of the vehicle. The placement and spacing is measured using the horizontal frame component. Fix the end of the frame to the middle casting through the hole marked with two notches. Fix the opposite end frame to the rear casting via the hole marked with one notch. The bolts can be left finger tight. With the Rhino Rack multi-tool, the correct way is to place it into the roof gutter Phillips screw side down. This will space the casting correctly with a 6.5 mm gap. Insert a 6 mm or 1 quarter inch drill bit into the drill chuck. Using the aluminum spacer bushing, press it firmly against the circular deboss within the casting. Drill through the center of the bushing through the hard top for both holes. Change to an 8.5 millimeter or 5 16 inch drill bit. Apply masking tape over the holes. Enlarge the pilot holes to the final 8.5 millimeter or 5 16 inch size. Vacuum fiberglass schwarf and remove masking tape. Apply butyl to the new holes. Install M6 shoulder bolts through the outer holes. You can now remove the frame from the top of the vehicle. As per the rear frame, loosen the hardtop bolts and install the washers and the nylock nuts. Tighten the shoulder bolts and the hardtop hardware to the final specified torque. Grab the front casting that corresponds with the side you are fitting. Place the front casting on the exterior of the vehicle. Using the same horizontal frame, we will space the front casting correctly. The middle casting will fix to the frame via the hole with two notches. The front casting attaches to the frame through the holes with the three notches. Again, finger tight is okay. Using the Rhino Rack multi-tool again, place it under the front cover of the casting to position 11 millimeters from the bottom of the gutter. Place the spacer bushings through the frame and into the front casting. Double check that the configuration matches this video and instructions. Install a six millimeter or one quarter inch drill bit into the chuck. With everything firmly positioned, drill through the spacer bushing and through the first panel of the roof only. To avoid drilling through the second panel, make sure the end of the drill bit does not extend further than 15 millimeters through the spacer bushing. Move the casting away from the drilled holes. Apply masking tape over the holes. Fit a 12.5 millimeter or one half inch drill bit to your drill. Open the pilot holes to the specified 12.5 millimeter or one half inch. Do not drill into the second skin. Insert the spacer bushings through the frame 
casting, and now hard top. Fit your six millimeter or one quarter inch drill bit. Drill through the remaining second skin of the roof. Refit your 12.5 millimeter or one half inch drill bit. Adjust the depth of the drill bit in your drill chuck to ensure only 40 millimeters or one nine sixteenth inch is exposed. Remove the spacer bushing and reapply the masking tape. Drill through the top of the opening to open the hole in the second skin to 12.5 millimeter or one half inch. Failure to use the drill stop may result in drilling into the roll cage and marring paint. You can now remove the frame from the roof. Vacuum and clean the surface. Apply a ring of butyl around the openings in the roof. Install a casting and spacer bushings in place. Removing the freedom panels from the roof. Loosen the hardtop bolts from the top of the roll bar. Push and seat the roll bar casting onto the roll bar. Align and center it underneath the front casting. It will slot into position over the hole in the roll bar. With the M8 flash washer installed, pass the M8 bolt through the factory roll bar hole into the roll bar casting. Tighten into position with the Jeep ratchet tool. Install sheet flat washer onto the 6mm bolt, followed by the 6mm rubber washer. Feed the bolt and washer assembly through the spacer bushing installed in the roof. The bolt should pass through the hardtop and through the internal roll bar casting. From inside, install the flanged M6 nylock nut onto the protruding thread. Tighten the multi-tool and 4mm hex together. Insert M6 flat washer over the M6 button head bolt. Through the slot and the horizontal frame piece, insert the bolt into the threaded insert of the uprights. Tighten with the 4mm hex key provided. To reinstall the insulation panel, remove the internal frame and replace the insulation panel. Loosely install the internal frame over the panels and mark where to trim. Remove the internal frame and panel. Trim away interfering sections of insulation and reseal edges. Refit the insulation panels and the internal frame. You have now completed one side of the backbone. Repeat the process for the opposite sides. Congratulations, you have finished installing the Rhino Rack backbone. Now the true customization can begin. Make sure you refer to your fitting instructions for specific load rating capacity of your chosen system. It's time for a non-specific carbonated drink, you and me both.